the common modalities of governance for I'm Ugo Mattei, I'm currently serving as the president of ABC Naples, which is the water company that runs the water system in Naples, Italy. The legal system has been corrupted by the neoliberal order in such a way that today it is uh, fiercely against the uh, uh, commons and fiercely against the public sector and favors in any possible way the transfer of public resources into private hands. That means that corporations are structured in such a way that uh, the for-profit motive and the possibilities to make short-term gains on natural monopolies such as water um, determine their behavior. In Naples, we were trying to go the other way around, to go against the wind. The wind of, of, of the neoliberal order is from the public into the private. And we try to go, get the other way around, from the private into the public. And so it's really like swimming in a river against the, against the current. Uh, it's very, very difficult. It took us a year and a half of fierce political struggle. Uh, once we had already got into the uh, control room, uh, just to get uh, the forms in practice, just to actually be able to determine the legal transformation of a private corporation into a public entity uh, that we had to invent, basically. We had to create new bylaws that make uh, public participation in the company structural. So we have uh, uh, the consumers and of water, the, the citizens of Naples, not really the consumer, but the citizens of Naples in the water, uh, in, the, in the board, we have a controlling board that is also uh, created by public participation of the workers, of the users of the water, of the environmental associations, all of that kind of things are now in the bylaws. And uh, it was very difficult to do that. And what I was trying to say to the people here, that uh, I've been an activist and a commoner for a long time. I was uh, myself uh, quite uh, influential in the uh, running of the water referendum in Italy. I was one of the lawyers that argued for those referendum in, the, in front of the Constitutional Court twice. Um, it's, uh, every uh, common has its different context and its different history. Uh, one thing is to have a baker in commons, and uh, one thing is to have a theater in commons. Uh, I had uh, an experience of occupation, for example, of the Valle in Rome, that has been a very important experience. But there, you see, once you are willing to break the law and you're willing to occupy a space and you can defend it physically, then you can create your commoning institution from the scratch. But if you get into a corporation of almost 200 million uh, a year of business that gives drinking water to a million people and is actually one of the largest uh, water companies in, the, in southern Italy, in a, in a city that is difficult as Naples, uh, you find a lot of resistance. You find a lot of uh, daily resistance uh, in the nitty gritty details of the law that you actually have to challenge within its own terms. And so this is what's probably the realism you were talking about. I'm just like trying, trying to run a business uh, that uh, cannot be worse than before, because if we transform it and then it gets worse than before, uh, then, you know, the old battle is lost. Whereas the frontier of the commons is to conquering more and more advanced positions by showing that we can run better the water system in Naples than it was run before by a corporation. And we are doing that so far, but it's hard. Yesterday in the discussion in the plenary, it came out very nicely by one of the questions towards the end. He said, okay, we're, we're kind of very excited of all we've been accomplished so far, and I'm excited as well. But, you know, the, the big corporations are still running the business. Uh, the capitalism is uh, alive and well, and it's more likely that we die than the corporations do, because corporations don't die. So today my talk was focused on saying, look, you know, we have to conquer the corporations, and to do that is not by being nice and sharing. You get into a 
political struggle. You need to get in the control room. You need to kick off the people that are there for profit and you're introducing a new uh, DNA in the corporation, a new DNA uh, that makes uh, the common and the caring for the longer period and for the generation part of the structure of the corporation. And this is a battle that has to be done interest by interest, corporation by corporation, board by board, political campaign by political campaign. It has to, you know, each, we need a huge division of, of labor between the people. Each one should kind of work in the same direction, but we have to realize that there is no common ground where we start from. Uh, every story is different and it's, it, it's actually a political struggle. There is nobody that will say, okay, come in, do the commoning, you know, at Wells Fargo Corporation. No, that is not going to happen, you know, but, but one day we can run banks as commons if we create the, the political conditions of transformation and we get over the public versus private division and we can claim, for example, you know, a private bank that is so powerful as, you know, this big corporate interest cannot be considered pa pa a private. We need to claim that its impact is on, 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 on everyone and therefore is public by definition. And being public by definition, we need to create institutions for the commoning. But you know, to do that, we need examples. We need to capture one bank and run it at the commons and show it works better. We did it with water company. You know, in Italy, we are trying now to do it with uh, a uh, factory, uh, following a little bit the Argentinian example, but not just uh, not, not a simple factory building, uh, you know, tiles, but a high-value-added factory, uh, Iris Bus, that they, they were doing buses in, uh, near, near Naples. What we are trying to do now is to capture that structure that has been abandoned by the fiat and make it a place in which we restructure old buses. You know, there are old buses abandoned all over the places. We want to bring them there to fix them with a high technology. We have a, a, a project with the University of Naples and show that we can restructure buses and create new ecological buses that are cheaper and better than the ones you go and buy purchase in the global market. But that again, you know, we will have to face, you know, police prosecution and all sorts of stuff that you need to, to tackle in these conditions. Well, you see, because in Italy we don't have a democracy and therefore, you know, the political system has been so much remote from uh, the needs of the people and so illegitimate what we are having that the joke that we are living in a democracy doesn't hold anymore. Okay, so this is where uh, you, you stop believing in the baloney that come out of the general rhetoric and you say, gee, you know, we've been sleeping in democracy for many years and now we woke up in dictatorship. So in Italy, you know, not only Berlusconi, which is, you know, making Berlusconi as the kind of the exception is the typical mistake of the left. It was like in America when they say, oh, Bush is the exception. No, that's not the exception. That's how the system works. So now in Italy, we know that it is not Berlusconi that is the exception. That is the system that is completely um, uninterested of what the people think. You know, the referendum, we got a, a victory. We got 27 million votes in Italy for the referendum without newspaper coverage, without television and without money. And we were able actually to win the battle just going around like crazy for two years in the country explaining the disaster that is to privatize the water system. And, and it was also the referendum on the nukes, by the way. And we won it. OK, after that, the government said, OK, you know what, you know, uh, recreation is off. You know, now we have to comply to what Europe requires. That was a lie. Europe doesn't require that. So we had to litigate in front of the Constitutional Court. We had to sue the government. We had to win the case. We had the Constitutional Court saying, look, you know, the people said something. You're, you're, you're better doing what the people said. But instead of doing what the people are saying, you know, the politicians spend all their time trying to structure ways to decide anyway. So in those conditions, the people that are intelligent and hardworking and, 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 and really claim in democracy, which are the heroes of our time, get organized, pull together their intellectual resources and start doing things. This is, what, this is why in Italy things are going th that way, because we are not yet desperate enough 
to the, you know, the, you could get to a point which, in which you are robbed so badly, like in Greece, you know, they've been so much robbed that now the people is kind of really suffering in the everyday life in such a way that it makes it even difficult to struggle politically. In Italy, we've been robbed a lot, but we are not yet there. And therefore, there is still kind of some energy that the people say, oh, gee, either we do it now or we are going to get in troubles really seriously. And therefore, this explains to me the, the, the importance of the, of the commons movement there. I think that, uh, first of all, uh, the worst enemy of the commons today is the state. Uh, you know, the private sector, we can assume it's an enemy because the private sector is for profit, the common is for sharing. So we can assume that the private sector, when is uh, plundering and when is kind of uh, ferociously extracting, is an enemy of the common. The problem is that there is a lot of uh, ambiguity in the relationship between the public sector and the commons. And that ambiguity is still there. So from a conference like this, I expect clarification of the fact that today the state institutions are so captured by the private corporate sector that they cannot be seen as friends of the commons anymore. And I try to show that in my presentation on Naples. The state institutions are our enemies there that we, because the law is produced by the state today. Okay? So this is one theoretical clarity. Then there is a lot of networking that is always important. And the third thing that I think would be very important is to start to discuss these issues at least at the European constituent level. We are going to get to, political ele to, poli to parliamentary elections in Europe next year, 2014. I want to have these issues discussed publicly by the people of Europe so that we can make the next European Parliament a constituent assembly for a, a Europe of the people and not a Europe, you know, of the banks. This is very important. We have a year to open a discussion. The discussion on the Commons is a way to open the minds of the future uh, of the people that are going to go to vote, saying, look, we are in serious troubles, but there are ways to do it better and there are ways to live a life that is more meaningful than being obsessively consuming uh, every day and spending your Sunday at IKEA. Ha, ha, ha.